Fish Nerds Podcast, where we talk about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I am Dave Kellum. And I'm Clay Groves. Together we talk about the fishy stuff that happened to us, people we know, and other fish nerds we've seen. Anything is fair game and is usually true. <laughs> we are going to talk today about Clay's Double O Groves story, uh, our Fish in the News segment. Uh, Todd Donovan, a friend of ours who is on his own quest, is going to be talking about uh, opening day, which was this last weekend here in New Hampshire. And then I'm going to talk about the herring returning to Exeter. Yay, herring! Yay! Yay. Uh, (laughs) Updates to our fishing quest and highlights of fishnerds.com. We added something. So, Clay, what's up with Double O Groves? All right, well, here's the thing. So, Anybody who's married knows you have to spend time with your wife. It's important. And being a nerdy guy, and my wife's kind of nerdy too, we decided to watch James Bond movie, and we thought, well, let's make a meal that matches up with the movie we're going to watch. Extremely so, nerdy. Okay, got extremely it. Extremely nerdy. So we did a little Google search, and in our search, we found the creator creator of – I almost said Austin Powers – the creator <laughs> of of James Bond Ian was, Fleming. A huge, yeah, was a huge, huge fan of Eggs Benedict. And he tried to work all the stories he wrote into James Bond eating Eggs Benedict. I've never witnessed this. I have no idea if it's true. But the gods of Google have said it, and it must be true because Google never lies. So I decided to kind of work that a little bit with a pan-seared Atlantic salmon with fresh asparagus. uh, And the salmon topped with poached eggs, hollandaise sauce on everything. And it was hands down the best salmon I've ever eaten. Nice. The only problem was we also made martinis. <laughs> and <laughs> did you put hollandaise sauce in that? No, but we probably should have. I don't. I, I've never had a martini that, like made appropriately. I guess it's just alcohol. Now, did you shake? <laughs> did you shake it and not stirred? I, I, maybe that's how I screwed it up. I stirred it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Either way, it tasted like a big glass of vodka. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably tell you too. We had we had only one martini glass in the house, so I had mine in a water glass. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was probably a that, probably, yeah. but I don't think it made any difference. So. <laughs> All right, but either way, if you've never had pan seared lang salmon with topped with with poached eggs and hollandaise sauce and some fresh asparagus, do it. Make it. It's super duper easy, and you'll be a cooking hero. Now, did you post that on fishners dot com? I will. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> like, I'll put the whole recipe up, uh, and it's super easy to do. Awesome. Yeah. So. So very good. Who knew that about uh, Ian Fleming and Eggs Eggs Benny? And you know, it's probably not true, <laughs> but who knows? <laughs> it makes for a good story. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Either way, it got me to eat something I never had before, so that's a win. That is a win. Um, On the subject of maybe true, who knows, um, science, the science section of NBC News today ran a story that said fish are using sign language. Awesome. Because we all know that with – is it American Sign Language? Uh, I I, I don't know. Like do they have thumbs? I I don't think so. These are are Mediterranean, Red Sea, so no, it must not be American. See, that's why. (laughs) <laughs> we, Americans are always so backwards using our thumbs for sign language. So yeah, I know. Yeah, so so this is uh, sign language. According to this, two types of fish have been shown to use gestures or sign language to help one another hunt. Mm. Uh, this is the first time these types of gestures have been found to occur in animals other than primates and ravens. Um, so you know, th- this was interesting, and I was thinking, oh, well, sign language—that's good, you know, and. and and you know, do they have little translators that kind of go with them? You know, to, to... <laughs> they get a little a little hermit crab on their back, going, "Oh, that means turn left." <laughs> He's saying hello. Say hello back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. These little interpreters. I, I don't know. So then uh, I I read further, and it says one's a grouper and one's a coral trout, which I have no idea what a coral trout is. No, but I'm not surprised about the grouper. Yeah, why not? All attitude, man. <laughs> Talk to the fin. 
Well, apparently these group are in the Red Sea hunt with giant moray eels. That's their they're like their friends. They're friends. That's, oh, that's sweet. That's <laughs> someone's writing a Disney story. <laughs> Someone is. <laughs> and and then a fish, uh, the a Napoleon Rassi is partnered up with the coral trout. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um, so wait, a fish called yeah, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 coral trout is teamed up with the octopus. Wow. So I don't know where the Napoleon Rassi comes into. This, I'm but, pretty sure an octopus is not a fish. Uh, that's true. That is that's true. Uh, uh, hey, so according to these scientists, which sounds like they got a kind of a cheesy grant, they uh, said the they found the fish are able to point their heads towards the prey. That's it. That's it? <laughs> That's Isn't it. Isn't that what anything hunting does? <laughs> I would think so. But, you know, they did this months and months of research, and they, they see where these groupers basically go, hey, 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 there's something here. Hey. And I need then, a new job. <laughs> That's awesome. And then the eel or the octopus just follows it, and because and, the eel and the octopus can get into the holes that the other fish can't. And I assume they share the, the, the fish. Well, that's unclear, but I think it the fish freaks out that gets trapped and either gets eaten by the eel or eaten by the grouper. So e- either it pops out of the hole and mm-hmm. the grouper eats it, or it stays in the hole and the eel eats it. we got to find some funding. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something we can do. I know. But anyway, so that's that's the big fish news is that uh, news. the headline is fish are using sign language and they're basically pointing with their heads – where there's food, and then their hunting partner comes over, and and it seems to me that it's the hunting partner that has all the smarts in this operation. They just wait for the fish to point at the food, and then they go get it. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah, it's interesting that that just those animals are the only ones that communicate. My dog does a pretty good job of communicating, <laughs> but they didn't list that as one of the animals that communicate. So no, it's, it's a primate or a raven. So uh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's, I'm not sure, but uh, NBC News, you know, they, 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 it's got to be right, right? God, how? Well, yeah, someone got paid. <laughs> someone got paid. <laughs> um, all right, so that's that's our fish in the news. Now we're going to try something we've never tried before. Call in time. Call in time. <laughs> this may or may not work. I hope it works. <laughs> I hope it does too. So I'm gonna give this a try. All right, while Dave is dialing, he's calling uh, Todd Donovan from New Hampshire Trout Undiscovered. Todd's on a quest to fish all the remote trout ponds in New Hampshire, and he's going to talk about the opening day of trout fishing and he's teaching his kid to use a float tube in April, which is I, – my, my wife would be upset if it was me doing that. Just, <laughs> just, just saying. All right. I think I have the right number. Let's give it a try. You, you, give it you, a go. You say hello, okay? Okay. Hello. Uh, wait, no, no, it's not. Oh, you gotta dial it yeah. first. <laughs> okay, he can, he can answer at any time. I hear it ringing. This is so exciting. I know. <laughs> I hope he's home. Hello. 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 Hey, Todd, this is Clay from Hi. Fish Nerds. And How Dave. are you? Good. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Todd. You are our first call in person or call I guess not call in, call out or what have you. You're the first 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 guest on podcast, Fish Nerds Yay! Podcast. Congratulations. Wow, we need some well, let's see if we can work out some uh, details here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. We're we're you're a guinea pig. So uh it's awesome. The show's going great, just so you know. So uh so so don't screw it up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna ruin everything. <laughs> Um, so, opening day on trout season. Yes, it was a beautiful day. It was actually probably, it was better than last year, that's for sure, weather-wise. But last but year we had early, earlier ice out, right? I think we did, but it wasn't, the weather wasn't that great that day, I don't believe. Okay. But this time the weather was, was beautiful. What pond did you go to? We went to Butterfield Pond in Wilmot. I don't even know where that is. <laughs> yeah, it's right off of uh, Route 4A, and it's a um, it's a short short hike in just a half a mile, and uh, it's um, uh, very easy for the kids to do. And, and did you uh, hike in with tons of gear, float tubes, boats, canoes? We just what hiked you... in with our waders. Waders and fly rods. Waders and uh, and spin casters. I brought my fly rod. Of course. 
and we uh, I let the boys drown some worms, and uh, we didn't catch anything. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, what's funny about that, and, and uh, Todd and I have been fishing a number of times together, all as part of our quest to catch all the fish in New Hampshire, and he keeps showing up to fish with me, uh, and both of us on our own catch fish. Together, we've never caught a fish. <laughs> Not together. Not, Not together. together. Well, I, I, I knew it was going to be this kind of story when you started with the weather. You're like, <laughs> how was your day? Well, the weather, I'm you saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think the water was just a little bit too cold. And, uh, and for a uh, remote trout pond, it's not that remote. It's only a half a mile in. But it was pretty busy there. There were about, I'd say, eight to ten people on that little pond. Wow. With, uh, mainly with canoes. And one guy had a little rowboat in there. So people are going to Great Lakes to uh, try to keep those ponds as remote as possible, but they bring in their own canoes. They lock them up. And, uh, but it's, a, it's such a short hike that people can get into uh, that pond very quickly. Wow. And this, and this uh, is part of your quest or not part of your quest? It is part of the quest. Uh, our goal is... Well, it's basically, my title is One New Hampshire Dad's Quest to Fish Remote Ponds with His Youngest Boys. Nice. Yeah, so and screw the older, is, <laughs> the older screw, kids. Well, I've already, I've already screwed them over. <laughs> I, I ruined their fishing experience. I, I was not a very patient dad. I was very, very uptight, and I'd never, you know, it was my first kid. <laughs> you realize if you, if you screw this up, you're going to have to have more kids. <laughs> No, the shop's closed. Uh, I understand. Yeah, well, good luck. Good luck with this. So how, how's it been going? It's been going very well. We went to uh, Butterfield again today and caught three trout. Yay! Right. Yes. Yeah, from, from the float tubes. Oh, nice. Dad, did you keep any of the trout? Yeah, we ate them for lunch. Oh. Yep, yeah, nice, nice three eastern brook trout. And supposedly there's some rainbows in there. So we're hoping that we could uh, uh, pick up a uh, rainbow trout or two. And, uh, and then our next our next uh, adventure will be Lonesome Lake up in Lincoln, up at Lafayette State Park, uh, and ca- and campground, which is in Franconia Notch, and that's a little bit more difficult of a hike, but um, I think we can do it just just fine. And, uh, and give then, me a call; I'll come with you. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. All we'll, right. Uh, I guarantee you failure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if we just sit there and it, it, the water was a bit cold today, but um, you put on some good um, uh, thermal underwear and some nice warm wool socks, and you'll be just fine. Wow. That's awesome. Well, um, I, if I end up fishing together, I hope you, you break the uh, the drought spell of you two failing every time you're fishing together. Um, and that's awesome. So, Todd, thank you so much for the uh, the first uh, Fishner's Correspondent Report. So thanks again. Nothing, nothing nerdier fantastic. than a fishing class. So nice job. <laughs> That's <laughs> that awesome. sounds great. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Todd. See you, Todd. Thank you. You guys take care. Yep. All thanks. Righty. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So that hey, worked. That worked. Well. <laughs> I know. Worked very well. All right. We win. <laughs> we win. Speaking of winning, Dave, talk. let's talk a little bit about the herring returning to Exeter and this this ghost of a person you know called river jim <laughs> river jim so i moved to exeter maybe seven years ago seven or eight years ago exeter new hampshire and the squamscott river comes up from great bay and the river herring which are l wives and l wives and blueback herring um together are called river herring uh travel up and try to get past the couple of dams here in exeter and it's a very it's a it's a choke point and when the herring are coming in, it's really spectacular because there's just tons of herring that move in. The stripers come up behind them. The great blue herons are eating them. The gulls are eating them. It's really just amazing. It sucks to be a herring. <laughs> it sucks to be a herring. <laughs> All the herring there, apparently, there are most of them are, I believe, elwives. Um, that's the primary one. So we don't really get the bluebacks, but the, the elwives like to come in through Exeter. Um, and so... When I first moved there, I ran into this dude, and this dude was, uh, he just kind of came out of the bushes, and he's like, hey, hi, my name is Jim, and how are you, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great, I'm looking down here, and I'm sitting this here, and he's like, yeah, this is a very good spot, and don't tell anybody, or 
I might have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> and so he basically threatened me. So he uh, called me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then, exactly. I think I waited a year because I, I really was scared of Jim. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Well, when your name that. is River Jim, you, <laughs> you have to be a little careful, a little cautious. Well, the funny thing is I never see River Jim ever except during the herring run. In the and, river. And I've seen him for seven years, eight years in a row. Every year I go down, and sure enough, I went down there today, or uh, Sunday, and um, I saw a bunch of herring. I actually did some cool videos. I'll, I'll post those on fishnerds.com. And I'm walking walking down the river, and there's River Jim sitting there in a chair with a camera on a tripod just sitting there. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we caught up. We, we did our annual uh, – catch up and uh the the guy's got a big passion turns out his family can be traced back to that exact mill like his his great 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 grandfather or something owned a mill down there but um he's he's the unofficial river keeper down there i believe it's a good job it is a good job and we need now that we've uh got this call out feature working we'll have to get him on the show too we'll have to yeah there's a lot of people we need to get the phone now <laughs> yeah exactly so but river jim while he's in the water too so it'd be really fun to hear that phone get dunked when he catches a fish <laughs> that'd be awesome so river yeah. jim the river herringer jim. in check out the videos on uh fishnerds.com it, it, they're awesome so Cool. Um, so now we're moving to the Quest updates. Clay, quest you, you went updates. out, right? Yeah, and for those who are new to the podcast or new to the Quest, uh, Dave and I have been on several Quests now for several years. The first Quest was a one-year Quest to catch and eat every kind of freshwater fish in New Hampshire. We're now on new, year two on that Quest, almost three. <laughs> so, But we don't care. We keep moving on. And the other Quest is we're on a Quest to fish um, all the dams active dams in New Hampshire and fill our damn bellies while we're at it. So those are our two quests, plus just trying to catch a fish. Um, so we're, we have about eight, six or eight fish left on that first quest, and the fish we're really hunting right now because of spawning season are long-nosed suckers. So I've been dry, and they live in a different watershed than I live, so I have to drive 45 minutes to a different river to hunt these fish, which happens to be at the base of Mount Washington, which is a beautiful spot. <laughs> And so I drive all the way up there, and it's a long drive, and I leave at like 5 in the morning because if I leave later, then my kids talk to me, and I can't go anywhere. Um, and I listen to NPR, which normally is okay, but on Sunday mornings at 5 in the morning, all it is is the BBC. And I'm pretty sure the BBC is trying to kill me. They're just trying to make me so tired I can't drive anymore because they just drone on and on. With their terrible accents and reading poetry and horrible things and interviewing people with accents I can't get over. Just – and I'm sorry to sound this. I'm such a redneck. But I just can't take it. There's something funny on at 5 in the morning. Through the morning. <laughs> Make you drive into a tree. Oh, I can't – I didn't even know what we were talking about. They just talk. <laughs> So, well, you know, that's the BBC. So it is. But I drove all the way up there. I put my waders on and the the – there, there were turkeys everywhere spawning. Turkey they spawning? No, they, they don't call it. Spawning? No, they don't call it spawning. I, I, I only talk fish. So <laughs> the turkeys were doing it. Nice. Yeah, and that was fun. So I, I grabbed my spear because you can spear suckers, and I hiked down to the river where the fish are supposed to be, and there was ice Ooh. all over the place. So the water should be about 42 degrees for sucker spawns, for long nose suckers. And with ice there, I was pretty sure the thing was colder than that. But I went in the water and hiked around a little bit, saw no signs of life, and decided to head to another place just to spear a sucker for fun. So white suckers are spawning in a pond, lake, a couple miles south, a couple miles, about 45 minutes south of there, called Lake Chikora, which happens to be under the most photographed mountain in the world, Mount Chikora. Nice. So just Google it. You'll find it. And, or you can go to fishnerds.com and see pictures. Which just uh, – wait, one one side note, pause. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite stories ever is you creating the ugliest fishing shack ever created <laughs> and putting it at the base of Mount Shakura, which is the most photographed mountain. So that year, anybody who came by in the winter to take this picturesque, beautiful picture of Mount Shakura got your ugly shack. Ugly with a tarp roof. <laughs> tarp roof, all this stuff. You build everything out of the dump. And uh, anyway, I, I thought that was yeah, – It was you, a great shack. You, fo- you, you were photobombing before it was called photobombing. Before I ever heard of it. I know. So, but here's the thing. is, So I had my kids with me for that second part of the trip. And we went down to the lake, and there were suckers spawning everywhere. I mean, they were 
just getting together these little groups. And if you don't know this, um, white suckers need at least three together to spawn. Menage a trois. Although oh. I saw I saw more than that happening. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to embarrass any of them. But there were at least three in a pile. And the way it works is the female, which is much bigger than the male, she parks herself right in a good spot. And the males swim up on either side. They kind of beat her with their fins and their caudal fin and stuff. And, and apparently she likes that. And she drops a bunch of eggs. And then the two males on either side go nuts and a cloud of milt. And you see this happening like crazy. It's so cool. And then the rainbow trout come in and eat all the eggs. Oh. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that's the, the circle of life. <laughs> wow. Short, short circle. Short circle. So I was out there. I had a spear. And my three-year-old wanted to come out with me. I met waiters on. I, I don't have waiters for my three-year-old because she's three. Right. Um, so I put her on my shoulders and I wade out there. And the suckers, I have a probably a six and a half foot spear. And we're in a lake. In a river, the suckers are tight together. You can, you can spear them easy. But in this lake, you go near them and they just take off another five feet from you. You just can't get to them. Yeah. So uh, finally, Sammy's on my shoulders. A bunch of tourists pull up to take pictures of the mountain because that's what happens. <laughs> I start telling them all about fish nerds and what I'm doing. And then they say, why don't you get one of those things? So I threw the spear into a group of spawning suckers, and I about sliced one of them in half. Ah! I got one. I got them on the first throw. Wow. And then I felt bad because I (laughs) stabbed a poor fish, and it looked like it really hurt. (laughs) It it, did, yes. And that's got to be some kind of parenting award, by the way. To be doing that with your three-year-old on your shoulders. Uh, I'm a hero. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, anyway, so I filleted it and put it in the freezer because I don't believe in killing fish for nothing. Um, so we'll be eating that at uh, another event sometime, hopefully. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. And, and you went sucker hunting too, right, Dave? I did. I went creek chub sucker hunting. Creek chub sucker hunt. Creek chub suckers. Now, we feel bad about the creek, creek chub suckers. So it's it's one of the eight that we haven't caught yet. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it's it's the Rodney Dangerfield of fish because no respect. <laughs> no respect. And we even pointed out that when they named it, they were like, oh, it looks like a creek chub, looks like a sucker. Yeah, let's just call it a creek chub sucker. Who cares? No one's ever going <laughs> to see him anyway. That's right. It looks like bait. <laughs> So the Creek Chub Sucker, um, I went out looking for them. And what's neat is I, I bought an underwater camera and was able to – to do some uh, scouting, and I found a school of little fish in this spot that New Hampshire Fish and Game had caught creek chub suckers before using a net, and um, there they were on the on the video. It, I, I can see a school of them, and I did some Google researching, and it turns out that yes, the young school up, but the as the adults, the adults are solitary, except obviously during spawning season they're not and, and they're not as fun as the white suckers when they spawn are they no they're just one-on-one you know boring yeah very also pur- get married <laughs> very puritan <laughs> jeez prudes yeah. uh, um, <laughs> but um but anyway so th- th- i went out sunday and i put on the smallest hook that we have which is a number 32 which is about half the size of a grain of rice teeny teeny tiny and tried to get these these schooling juveniles to eat it, and they won't eat it. And I, I did some research, and uh, it turns out that they they eat like copepods and all these small little plankton, and that's well what on a hook feeding. that side. Can you get a scud on it? I, I I can easily get a scud. I think I need to get uh, like a water flea or something. I don't know. It, oh, it's going to be really <laughs> it's going to be really tricky. But these these young ones just won't do it. So I'm hoping like every week these things are getting bigger. And um, hopefully I'll, I'll time it right so I can get them while they're big enough as they switch. Because the adults eat insects and eat, eat stuff that you can hook. And um, so I, I need to get them right when they transition. So, um, well, get them. I know. I'm on them. I'm on them. So, and report back. Yeah. So uh, anyway, the, the quest gets very, very tough here at the end. Um, but we, we will not give up. So that's, that's the quest update. That's the update. And speaking of updates, if you want to see the fish nerds in person, person, 
<laughs> we'll be making an appearance at Tin Mountain Conservation Center on April 30th at 7 p.m. Um, you can just go to our website and you'll see updates on that or our, our Facebook page to see an update there. It should be a good event, one hour with us. It includes eating a unique fish of some sort. We won't tell you what it is because we don't know. <laughs> but so. it, it'll be unique, I'm sure of it. But come support us. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice gig. Tin Mountain up in Albany, New Hampshire. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, and check it out. It'd be really great. That's awesome. And fishnerds.com is, is, is building and building every day. We're adding new stuff to it all the time. So uh, our podcast feed, probably by the time you're listening to this, has been picked up by you, uh, iTunes iTunes. iTunes. We're famous. We, we are famous. <laughs> and, um, and you know, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So uh, be sure to check out and bookmark and subscribe to fishnerds.com. And remember, we troll the Internet so you don't have to. <laughs> All right. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs>